From the Convergence Studio in the School of Communication, this is Loyola News Chicago. Hello and welcome to Loyola News Chicago. I'm Queenie Ama. And I'm Michael McDevitt. We begin with an update on a local story that went national. Empire actor Jesse Smollett is charged with filing a false police report here in Chicago. His bail is set as at $100,000. Last month, Smollett said he was attacked by two men who shouted racist and homophobic slurs at him while they uh, hung a noose around his neck. Chicago police say none of that is true. They allege Smollett paid two brothers to stage the attack because he was unhappy with his pay on the Fox television series. They also allege he mailed himself a threatening letter to back up his story. Smollett is facing a felony charge that could land him in uh, up to three years in jail. Chicago Police Superintendent Eddie Johnson said in a news conference that police were angered at the idea that Smollett might have faked it. Johnson also said with the city's real historic racial divides, this incident is despicable. Carla Rogner hit the streets to find out what people think about the recent charges. Now that Smollett has turned himself in, the investigation has caught a lot of people's attention. We talked to Loyola students and Chicagoans who said they are disappointed in Smollett's actions. I just, I don't understand. Uh, it makes real victims, uh, it makes it hard for people to believe their stories. He's getting all of the press for, you know, like a fake hate crime that a lot of people encounter every day. It's definitely wrong because it takes away from real hate crime. And especially as a person of color, you know, it makes our credibility look terrible. We also talked to some fans of the show Empire who said they are curious to see now what will happen to Smollett's role and what kind of further legal action will be taken against him. Carla Rogner, Loyola News, Chicago. Variety Magazine reports that producers might suspend Smollett from Empire, which has also shot scenes outside Loyola's School of Calm in the past. Smollett has been a member of the cast since 2015 for all five seasons of the show. Governor J.B. Prisker's campaign focuses on legalizing marijuana and adding jobs. The campaign proposal says it's raising $1 billion in state revenue. He states whether we like it or not, marijuana is available whenever needed. Pritzker says he doesn't just see this as a financial revenue, but bringing it to light will benefit the state from social and criminal standpoint. He also says that another benefit for imposing this will allow taxing on cannabis. Governor J.B. Pritzker has now signed Illinois $15 minimum wage into effect. Small business owners are getting ready for the increase for their employees. And for some businesses, owners, it may mean cutting staff. Dimitri Atsavis has already started doing extra duties around his family-owned restaurant in order to cut back on employees. Dengio's has been around since 1972 and was passed on from his great-grandfather. For the first time, the $15 minimum wage increase is making him get a bit creative on how he can efficiently run his family legacy. It's a scary time to be in uh, the restaurant industry. We're trying to be proactive and stay ahead of the curve. Uh, we're doing a test run right now, obviously still working the kinks out. Um, it's a self-service cash register. We're gonna try to eliminate one of our employees by using this. His team had a discussion about changing their products so that the vendors themselves will pre-cut and pre-wash their produce and meat so they can eliminate additional employees in the prep room. The restaurant has nearly 60 employees and some have been with the company for over 10 years. Ed Savis says that makes the decision hard on whose hours might be cut or who will not make the cut at all. Illinois is one of the 16 states that has filed a lawsuit against President Donald Trump after he declared a national emergency to fund a wall on the U.S.-Mexican border. By issuing an emergency, the president can use money from the Pentagon and other agencies without permission from Congress. The states say that using emergency money will hurt their economies and take funds away from agencies that need it. Other states in the lawsuit include California and New York. It's been four months since two people were murdered in two shootings in Rogers Park, and police still have not identified the shooter. Police say they have exhausted more than 300 leads in search for the suspect, but even with the case unsolved, some Loyola students say they still feel safe on the Lakeshore campus. There has been no killing since, so I'm not too worried. I feel typically safe on campus because like, I know we have like 
Loyola PD around, and then even off campus, there's Chicago PD everywhere. So overall, yeah, I feel really safe usually. Like he wasn't on campus, on campus. So like I still feel as safe as I did before. I don't Chicago Police Sergeant Rocco Aliado confirms that the Rogers Park murders are still an open case. Chicago city election is next week with the mayor's race and the vote for aldermen. A battle is underway in the 49th Ward, which represents Rogers Park. Joe Moore has been the alderman for the 49th Ward since 1991. Political newcomer Maria Haddon has a history of activism and community organization. According to the campaign finance reports, Haddon has more than $95,000 of campaign cash on hand. Moore has more than $228,000 campaign cash. Among their differences, Haddon wants to stop charter school expansion while Moore supports charter schools. Moore is considered more friendly to developers while Haddon says that she is all for affordable housing. Loyola's Wellness Center doesn't provide birth control without a medical reason, but Planned Parenthood's now got you covered. A new program will give free birth control to anyone who's uninsured or can't afford it. Planned Parenthood says the program is designed to help people in most situations, and the program covers birth control pills, injections, and IUDs. The, close, the closest Planned Parenthood clinic to the Lakeshore campus is on North Broadway Avenue off the Bryn Mawr Red Line stop. Coming up next, it's the same sustainability, but a new challenge for eco-friendly Loyola students. And later, capturing what looks like a scene out of history with a brushstroke. They said I would never become a doctor. They said my skin was too dark. I should straighten my hair. They thought my nose was too big. They counted me out too many times to count. Because I fight to be heard, they call me an angry black woman. My hair was distracting. I would never start my own business. I say my skin empowers me. Take it or leave it. I say don't touch my hair. I am a black doctor. I own my own practice, and because of this, I'm changing lives every single day. My blackness is empowering. My skin, my hair, my confidence, my culture, my community is empowering. So believe it. So believe it. So believe it. Loyola's campus is paying extra attention to waste and recycling this week because it's the first annual Waste Week. That means a week of events and programs encouraging students to think about their consumption and waste habits that includes tabling in the Damon Student Center and holding clean plate challenges in the dining halls where students coach dinners about how much food waste they produce. In previous years, Loyola was part of Recycle Mania, a national recycling competition among universities. While the university isn't involved in Recycle Mania anymore, they're still using this week to encourage waste diversion. This week we're celebrating Waste Week. It's our annual uh, event where we sort of address waste-related issues. Um, so what that means at Loyola is that we, you know, push out some messages and communications related to waste issues, and that can be recycling or composting or just reducing overall the waste we generate. The university felt that Recycle Mania didn't help with campus waste issues, so they took it into their own hands. Loyola, <coughs> Loyola men's basketball is now tied for first place after a 70-58 win over University of Evansville in a Wednesday night home game. In the last home game before students leave for spring break, the Ramblers came out strong against the Purple Aces to beat them after that team defeated them on the road back in January. Redshirt guard Marcus Towns led the Ramblers with 21 points. Center Cam Crutwig also put up 18 points. Loyal is now tied for first in their conference against Drake University. The Ramblers will play in the conference tournament in St. Louis at the beginning of March. The White Sox stopped a couple million shy of landing a deal with former Los Angeles Dodger and free agent Manny Machado. Machado signed a 10-year, 300-deal $300 million deal with the San, Die San Diego Padres after the White Sox tried to court him. USA Today reported that the White Sox offered Machado a $250 million deal in the hopes that his talent could help their next season, but it wasn't enough. 
Machado is a four-time All-Star player and holds two gold gloves. Loyola students are heading to Puerto Rico this spring break and they are getting credit for it. Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico in 2017, causing major destruction to the island and its people. Two years later, the island is still recovering. Students will capture the island's current state through video storytelling, text articles, and commercials. Professor Patty Lombardi, who is organizing the trip, and a student explain what they hope to get out of the experience. We chose it because there are so many interesting stories to talk about there, um, how, Puerto, uh, how Maria affected people on all kinds of levels, affected businesses. Um, and while there's still a lot of recovery that needs to be done, a lot of recovery has been done. And we want to document the growth that has already happened, as well as some of the problems that still remain. I heard about the Puerto Rico trip for spring break. I jumped right on it. I'm super excited to get out into the field. It's a great time to go because of the hurricane. Um, and I think it would be great to put on our portfolio. The student projects will go to several local organizations to use on their website and social media. This year's spring break trip follows a very successful trip last year to Cuba. Loyola News photographer Caitlin McMurray shows us what she found on the streets of Havana and how U.S. tourists are creating their own memories there. If someone had said to me, if you can paint one more place on the planet, before you die, immediately, it would have been Cuba. I'm a professional painter. I'm here with a group called Paint Cuba. It's sponsored by Plein Air Magazine. We have 40 people from all over the United States. They're all just a bunch of crazy people who like to paint. We have people who are professionals and we have people who are just hobbyists. And we like just to be together and have common interests. And we, talk about painting and we talk about the things that we love, which basically is painting. I'm going to use phthalo. That would be perfect. Yeah. Yellow. We're here for a week to paint Cuba, to talk to the wonderful Cubans, learn about their country. Today we're painting cars. It's nice to see the old cars, the bright colors. I grew up near Detroit and was in an automotive family. It's like being at a car show every day for me. And so I'm in heaven. The people are so wonderful here. We like them a lot. So it's just an opportunity to get to know some folks. We've met some local artists. We've met a lot of locals just kind of talking to them as we paint. There's always people that come and look and take pictures right up in your face. And, you know, and then there's always little kids that want to use your paintbrushes. A really nice young man, he stopped, watched me paint, and we had a conversation. And he. He said, I'm a painter too, you know, and, and his paintings were remarkable. There's so much here that these people have to give. Yeah, I'm just over the moon. This is my Mecca. One thing that we really enjoyed about that Caitlin story is uh, it's all shot on an iPhone. That's incredible. That's all the news for tonight. For tonight, thanks for watching. Join us next time for another edition of Loyola News Chicago.